Sorry, buddy, but press the wrong button. All right, I'm back. All right, so now we have to look at this part. We have the bounds of x. We take the lowest lowest possible value, the smallest value. So that's our x value. Now we're looking at this. So looking at this, what we want is to isolate x. So we have negative delta less than x minus 2. Because so that's how we get rid of the absolute values for less than. So we'll add 2 to both sides. We're, we're using... No, no, see, up to is 4. It's 4, because that's what C is. This is x minus C. So we add 4 to everybody. And we're using this value here. So we have negative 225 over 64 plus 4. And then... 225 over 64 plus 4. Alright, so come down there 64. So 64 times 4, 256. We have negative 225 over 64 plus 256 over 64. 225 over 64 plus 256 over 64. So look at this one. 256 minus 225 is 31 over 64. That's going to be huge. 481 over 64 is not going to be something. We're going to use this one. So that's our... So the value of delta is... 31 over 64. Remember, we take the, have to take the, less, the least of the two to make sure we cover everything. All right, now let's do number three. Find the given function f of x and the value of lc at epsilon greater than zero. Find the largest open interval C on which the inequality f of x minus the limit less than epsilon holds. Determine the largest value of delta. Okay, okay. So we're doing another one of these. The largest open interval. of x equals x squared, L equals 64, C equals negative 8, epsilon equals 0.15. We have to prove this. So minus C gamma implies that f of x minus L is less than epsilon. So the largest open interval, large okay. So we'll go back here first. Let's plug in what we know. C is eight, so it's negative eight. X f of x is x squared minus sixty-four. 
x plus 8. So we know that's perfect squares, so it's x plus 8, x minus 8. So let's first look at this one. So we have to get rid of that. So we divide everybody by x minus 8. So we have negative, ep an epsilon is negative 0 0.15. Positive zero one five. So let's look at as x approaches c. Let's look at negative eight. So if we put negative negative eight minus eight. up now. Okay, so far so good. Let's see what that is. I might check it out. So those Cancel. So we have 0 0.15 divided by 16. No. 0 0.15 divided by 16. Got 0 0.0093753. Divided by the same thing to be negative. But look at the absolute value of them. So then we've got. to use that. So we have this is for that's for our gamma or delta minimum. So I have negative 0 0.009375 I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Less than x, less than 0 0.009375 minus 8. So minus 8. Negative seven point nine nine zero six two five negative zero point zero zero nine three seven five minus eight 
equals negative eight zero zero nine three seven five. Okay, so our answers are. Where's my sheet? So, the largest open interval in which C is in, and that is within that. Negative 80093 to negative 7.990. You know, how many questions? How many decimal places on it? 607. And the largest value of that is 0 0.0093. Because that's what we, this is what we added on both sides. Alright, that's that one. The next question. Number four. For the given function f of x and the given values of c and epsilon greater than zero, find the limit L of limit f of x. Then determine the largest value of delta greater than zero such that zero is less than that okay so so this is two three four f of x equals x squared minus nine x minus three c is equal to three epsilon that's minus three. Now we have to do, oh yeah, we have to do this. This is called the epsilon delta proof. Let's plug in what we know. x minus c is 3. Okay, then f of x is x squared minus 9 x minus 3. The limit well, we, don't know, we don't know that yet, but we'll figure that out. Looking at this function here, we know that the top is a difference of two squares, x plus 3, x minus 3, over x minus 3. Which is less than 0 0.03. So that's our function, is x plus 3. When x goes to 3, the limit is 6. So we have x plus 3 minus 6 which becomes x minus 3 Now let's see what the range of x is. So drop the absolute values. We get zero, negative 0 0.03, x minus 3, positive 0 0.03. Add 3 to everyone. 3 minus 0 0.03 is 2.97. 3.0. 
asking us what the question is looking for first. So the value of L, we know is 6. We calculated that already. Okay, the largest, we're going to look at the uh, gamma noun, or delta. So we know which ones we have to use. We have to use the lower of the two. So we have 0, So we have negative 2.97 minus 3, 2.97, add 3, no, we need to know that. Yeah, so this is three minus two point seven is zero point zero three, which is what we had earlier. So the largest value is 0 0.03. Okay, and do the next one. Given the epsilon delta proof, give the epsilon delta proof of the limit fact. Limit of 4x plus 2 as x goes to 0 equals 2. Okay, so we know this. x minus c is that. Push there. No, that's not right. Let's work it out. So zero x minus c f of x minus the l. So we have zero x minus zero. Four x plus two minus 2 those cancel so it's absolute value of 4x the constant multiple comes out so it's 4 so in order for these to be the same So that means or which is what that says it's B number six we gotta fill in all these spots now <coughs> Our function is 3 over x, our limit is that, our c is that. Okay. Uh, 2, 3, 6. So x equals 8. Three. So f of x equals 3 over x, the limit is 3 over 8, the c is 8.
What was the first thing you got to fight? Okay, we have to do this. So we now see. So we have to have zero minus x minus eight. So that first one is eight. implies 3 over x minus 3 over 8 so this next box is 3 over 8 so now we can solve this we have negative epsilon 3 over x minus 3 over 8. We have to solve this part. Get rid of the constant. So we have negative epsilon plus 3 over 8. 3 over x so let me go make these look nicer so you come in the denominator so it's negative 8 epsilon over 8 8 epsilon over 8 the common denominators eight epsilon plus three over eight. Okay, now what I gotta do is since I want to solve for x, I gotta flip the equations. But whenever I flip them, I change the size of them. So I have 8 over 8 epsilon plus 3. Now I multiply everybody by 3. To solve for x, I got. 24, 8 epsilon plus 3, 24, negative 8 epsilon plus 3. <coughs> What's the next thing I'm looking for? Okay, this one here is 3 over x minus epsilon. So this one is 3 over 8 plus epsilon. That goes in here. And then I went ahead and f I went ahead and skipped this part and I just flipped them. When I did that, I switched the order. So you notice what they have there is 3 minus 8. Oh, 3 minus 8. So it's 3 plus 8. So it's 24 over 3 plus 8 epsilon. Next thing you want us to do here, 
the inequality where we can't have x cannot equal 8 from the first part, true. Now find a value of delta greater than 0 and enter in the interval inside this interval. So it's 8 minus delta, 8 plus delta. Take delta to be the distance from c equals 8. Okay. So, what we have to do now is take the min of these possibilities. Now, 8 minus 24, 3 plus 8 epsilon. What's happening now is we're now taking this. We're solving for this one. Where these are our endpoints. We did is x minus eight. Less than delta, so we have negative delta so that's what we're looking for. Now what we have to do is find the minimum of these two values. So let's look at the first one. 8 minus 24, 3 plus 8 epsilon. Get a common denominator. Three plus 8 epsilon. 3 plus 8 epsilon. 8 times 3 is 24. 64 epsilon 3 plus 8 epsilon minus 24 3 plus 8 epsilon 24 plus 64 epsilon minus 24 since I have a common denominator 24 is cancel Plus 8 epsilon. So there's the first one. With 3 plus 8 epsilon. Now we do the same thing for this next one. With 8 minus 24, 3 minus 8 epsilon. Get a common denominator. the same denominator, so I'm not going to waste my time with that. 3 minus 8 epsilon. So I've got 24 minus 64 epsilon minus 24. So this gives me negative 64 epsilon. So my two possibilities, I have to take, remember, I gotta take the min of these.
so it's the absolute value of them. So there, it's going to be 64 epsilon 3 plus 8 epsilon or 64 epsilon 3 minus 8 epsilon. Those are my two possibilities. Remember, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the number. So this is 3 plus 8. This is 3 minus 8. So the delta is going to be 64 epsilon 3 minus 8 epsilon. That's the last box. Three minus eight epsilon. All right, three plus eight. I'm gonna three plus. I use three plus eight as epsilon. So that's that one. And then you can see the rest of the logic. This is pretty much the sheet. Follow this sheet when you're doing all those other ones. The epsilon delta proofs. This is a step by step one. Okay. Next one is number seven. Let's look at number seven. Define what it means to say that the limit of g of x as x plus zero equals k. any epsilon greater than zero, there is a corresponding number ep delta greater than zero such that zero is less than x less than delta. Absolute value of x less than delta implies that no, because remember the the structure was this. Okay, we're saying that c equals to 0, so it's absolute value of x is that. So this one's going to be g of x minus k. So that one doesn't do it. For any number epsilon greater than 0, there's a corresponding delta greater than 0 such that, okay, that's true, it implies that g of x, no. It's got to be g of x minus k is less than epsilon. So that's not right. That's not right. For any number epsilon greater than zero, there's a corresponding number of delta. So that's okay. That's good. Implies that g of k. Yep, that's got to be it. Number eight. Ooh, an application one. Good. <coughs> Before, before contracting the grind engine cylinders, before contracting the grind, grind, grind engine cylinders to a cross-sectional area of six inches squared, you need to know how much deviation from that ideal cylinder diameter of c equals 2.764, if you can allow and and you can allow and still have the same area, the same area coming within 0 0.01 square inches of the required six inch squared. To find to find out, you let alpha or uh, let function a equals pi times x over two squared, and look for the interval in which you must hold x to make a minus six. The limit is six the function minus 6 is less than or equal to the epsilon which is 0 0.01 what intervals do you find all right so let's look at our intervals let's see what we have first two am i in section three or section four three two three So what do I have? I know my C 
is 2.764. The limit is 6 inches squared. This is inches. The epsilon is 0 0.01 square inches. And my function f of x is a, which is pi over x over 2 squared. So if we have this, x minus c is less than then statement. So let's plug in what we know. 0 is less than x minus c is 2.764. f of x is pi x over 2 squared. l is 6. 0 0.01. Okay, so let's look at this side first. So we have negative epsilon pi x over 2 squared minus 6. Right. Solve for x. Get rid of the six first. And we should put that point zero one in there. Yeah, I'll put it in there. So this is point zero one. So 6 minus 0 0.01 is 5.99. X over 2 squared, the 6's are gone. 6 plus 0 0.01 is 6.01. Divide by pi. over 2 squared let's go ahead and square these one now square root let's get it. so the square root of 5.99 I could have just squared these first, then multiply it by 4, and then square root it. So I have x. Remember, I squared that, so it's x over 2. Now I'll multiply everybody by 2. Less than x. Let's see here. Let's see what those values are. Okay, so we have the square root of five point nine nine divided by pi equals times 2 2.7616 4.8 never 
this side is square root of 6.01 divided by pi times 2 2.7662 blah 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 All right. Two point two point six seven six six two. So those are my estimated rule. Two point seven six two, two point seven six six. That's my interval. So the interval again is 2.762 7, 6, 6. Yeah. And the last one. Find the function for the function graph to the right. Why explain why limit of f of x as x goes to 5 is not equal 5. Remember, for a limit to exist, it has to have the same value from left to right. From the left side it approaches 5. From the right hand side it approaches 2. So it doesn't equal 5 because it doesn't exist. The limit doesn't exist. Alright, good luck everybody. Thank you much.